Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So far, four problems I have completed on analysis of variance problems, ANOVA problems. So ANOVA is a statistical technique which is applied when we want to compare the mean of three or more than three. That means more than two. So whenever we want to compare the uh, sample means of more than two samples, we apply statistical technique called analysis of variance. It has wide application in research. In a number of cases, a researcher wants to find out whether the mean of more than two samples are same or not. So it will not be specified in the problem that this is the problem of ANOVA. You have to identify. If only two samples are given, t-test or z-test. If more than two samples are given, then you have to apply ANOVA. Again, ANOVA we have two, so I mean, two-way classification and one-way classification. If you want to find out the differences of only one factor, then we apply one-way law. So far, four problems have completed till the last video. Only one-way ANOVA we have applied. And in this video also, I am going to do two more problems on one-way law. In the next video, I will start to the problems on two-way ANOVA. Remember, if you join now, you may not be able to understand. This chapter, Sampling Statistical Technique, will have to be followed only regularly. From first video, second video, third video, then only you can be able to get the perfection. Otherwise, if you join in between, you may not. So my suggestion, if you have not watched the earlier videos, go to the uh, playlist of my channel select the subject statistics for management select the videos of analysis of variance first a theory video be perfect what is there then first a problems video where I have explained you how to solve the ANOVA problem then you can come to this video now one two three four first second third fourth problem we have done fifth problem is two-way ANOVA afterwards that means after this video i'm going to do fifth problem sixth problem is also two-way ANOVA seventh problem two-way ANOVA eighth problem is one-way ANOVA so i'm going to do eighth problem remaining fifth sixth seventh in the next video i'm going to explain to you all regarding two-way ANOVA now eighth problem you see to assess the significance of possible variation in performance in a certain test between the grammar schools of a city a common test was given to a number of students taken at random from the following results make out an analysis of variance specifically given make an analysis of variance and know what you have to apply so a common test is given to the students of four schools the schools are a b c d and five students are selected from each school. A school, five students are selected. They have given a test and the result of the test are 8, 10, 12, 8, 7. This is the performance or marks scored by students of A school. B school, again, five students are selected. Test was given. The marks obtained by five students, 12, 11, 9, 14, 4. Like that, C and D. We want to find out whether the performance of students of all the four grammar schools are same or not. Only one factor we are considering the student's performance. That's it. That's why we apply one way and all. Right. So before starting the solution, take a screenshot. First of all, you must have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep ready the problems. And take a screenshot of the solution of this eighth problem. Eighth problem. Then I'll explain all the points. Come on, first of all, we'll make the calculations for ANOVA. As usual, every problem, last four problems, we have prepared the table, same table I'm making. In the columns, I'm taking the samples. Here, samples are the schools, A, B, C, D. So, schools A, B, C, D. 
for each school we want two columns x1 x1 square x2 x2 square x3 x3 square x4 x4 square so x1 are the scores of the a school it is given in the problem 8 10 12 8 7 8 10 12 8 7 this is the score of a school square it 8 8 is a 64, 10 10 is a 100, 12 12 is a 144, 8 8 is 64, 7 7 49. Take the total 421 is the summation x1 square and 45 is the summation x1. Similarly, you take for B, C, D. B values are 12, 11, 12, 11, 9, 14, 4. Square it and take the total. C school, the performance given in the problem is 12, 18, 16, 6, 8. Square it and take the total. D school performance is given in the problem 13, 9, 12, 16, 15. Square it, take the total. So we got all the totals of all the columns. Now we apply the steps. The first step we have to find out the total of all the items in all the samples. Total of all items in all samples that is called T. T is equal to summation x1 plus summation x2 plus summation x3 plus summation x4. So x1 is how much? 45. 45 plus 50 plus 60 plus 65. You'll get 220. That is T. Second step, correction factor CF. T whole square by N. We got T value 220. 220 whole square divided by N. N stands for number of items in all the samples. Every sample we are, we are having 5-5 five, five items. 5 students are there. So how many schools? 4 schools. So 5 4 is 20. The total 20 items are there. N is equal to 20. We will get 2 4 2 0 is the correction factor. Next step. Same steps I am following what we have done in the last 4 problems. The total sum of squares of all items in all samples. The total sum of squares. Squares means this one. This is x1 square. This is x2 square. x3 square. x4 square. The sum of all the squares of the items in all samples. It is called SST. So formula for SST. Summation x1 square plus summation x2 square plus summation x3 square plus summation x4 square minus correction factor. So here 421 plus 558 plus 824 plus 875 minus 2420. SST we got 258. Next come SSC. Sum of squares between samples or columns. Samples are given in columns. Four samples A, B, C, D. The so sum of squares between samples or we can say columns. It is called SSC. Formula for SSC. Summation X1 whole square by N1. Plus summation X2 whole square by N2 plus summation x3 whole square by n3 plus summation x4 whole square by n4 minus correction factor same formula what we are applying in every problem summation x1 is how much 45 so 45 square divided by n1 n1 means number of items in the sample how many items are there 1 2 3 4 5 so every sample we are having 5 5 items so n15, n25, n35, n45. So 45 square by 5 plus 50 square by 5, 60 square by 5, 65 square by 5 minus 2420. Correction fact. So we'll get SSC 50. So we got SST, we got SSC. Now we need the sum of squares within samples. Sum of squares within samples that is called error, SSE. SSE is equal to SST minus SSC. Simply you deduct 258 minus 50, 208 is SSE. That's all. So we have made all calculations required for making ANOVA table. Now ANOVA table you have to remember. From first theory video I am stressing that you have to remember the columns and rows of ANOVA table. This is ANOVA. 
five columns are there first column source of variation second column sum of squares third column degree of freedom fourth column mean squares fifth column f ratio same first between samples or columns this is called ssc how much is ssc here 50 then degree of freedom c minus 1 columns minus 1 so how many columns are there four four samples four columns a b c d so four minus one three then m s c is equal to s s c divided by degree of freedom so 50 divided by 3 16.67 now come to within samples or error s s e how much we got s s e here 208 so n degree of freedom is n minus c all these things you have to remember n minus c n stands for total number of items in all the samples the total number of items in all the samples 20 every sample 5 5 items 5 4 is a 20 so 20 minus c c stands for columns how many columns do we have 4 so 20 minus 4 60 mse is equal to sse divided by degree of freedom 208 by 16 30 that's all now we can find out f ratio F is equal to MSC by MSE, 16.67 by 13, 1.28 is the computed value of F. Now we will apply the steps. The first step is uh, laying down of hypothesis, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis, no significant difference in the performance of students of the four schools. The performance of all the four schools are same. Mu1 is equal to Mu2 is equal to Mu3 is equal to Mu4. Null hypothesis. Mu1 is equal to Mu2, Mu3, Mu4. There is no significant difference in the performance of different schools. Alternative hypothesis opposite. Mu1 not equal to Mu2, not equal to Mu3, not equal to Mu4. There is significant difference in the performance of students of the four schools. You can write in your own words. The only thing is you have to remember the logic, what I am explaining. Not level of significance. Nothing is given. So I am taking 0 0.05. Assumed. Next comes degree of freedom. We want two degree of freedom. One degree of freedom for numerator, other degree of freedom for denominator. Numerator is MSC. MSC, what is the degree of freedom here? 3. The degree of freedom for MSC is 3. Right? Here you have taken 3. And denominator is MSE. For MSE, degree of freedom is 16. So V1 is called degree of freedom for numerator, which is 3. And V2 is equal to degree of freedom denominator, 16. 3, 16. Right? Now, critical region. Now you have to refer the table. I have provided the PDF of this table in the description. Take a printout of the PDF of T table. Without this, we cannot come to the conclusion. So in this F table, we have 1% points and 5% points. So 1% level of significance, 5% is given. But our requirement is 5%. So see the 5%. On the top, it is written degree of freedom for numerator. And in the side, it is given as degree of freedom for denominator. So numerator we have 3. So under 3 you see. Under 3 and against 16. So under 3 against 16 I am finding here 3.24. Under 3 and against 16 3.24. This 3.24 is the critical value or table value. 3.24. The critical region lies for f greater than or equal to 3.24. So any value which is more than 3.24 will fall in rejection region and any value less than 3.24 will fall in acceptance region. This diagram will make it clear. The so critical region right side. So 3.24 or more will go in rejection region. Less than 3.24 will fall in acceptance region. Our computed value is how much? 1.28. So 1.28 is less than 3.24. Here it will come 1.28. It is less than 3.24. So it falls in acceptance region. Null hypothesis is accepted. 
when it falls in acceptance region null hypothesis accepted what is null hypothesis no significant difference in the performance of students of the four schools that's what the computed value of f 1.28 is less than the critical value 3.24 so it falls in acceptance region null hypothesis is accepted there is no significant difference between the performance of the students of the four schools this is the end of eighth problem now i'm going to start the next problem problem number nine eighth problem just now we have completed now ninth problem is also of one way ANOVA that's why first we complete all one way ANOVA then we'll start two way classification the ninth problem see carefully four salesmen were posted in different areas by by a company the four salesmen four samples the number of units of commodity X sold by them are as follows so each salesman how many units are sold how much are the sales conducted by each salesman given conduct analysis of variance test so simply it is asking you whether there is significant difference in the sales made by four salesmen so only one factor we are considering that is performance of salesmen nothing else so it is called one way classification just like the previous problem here a the sales conducted by a are 20 23 28 29 the sales conducted by b are 25 32 30 21 c 23 28 35 18 d 15 21 19 25 so four four sales four sales are given for each salesman right now we can take the values which are given in the problem as it is and we can calculate f test but the values are bigger values why can't we apply coding method to simplify the calculations to reduce the time we'll get the same answer whether you take same values or you use coding method the ultimate answer will be same if you take the actual values the time consumed will be more more time is required because the values will be much larger huh? if you use coding method the values will become very small even without calculator also you can do the calculation the time will get reduced ultimate answer will be same so here what we observe is all the sales are around 25 you can see some sales are just below 25 and some sales are just above 25 so we'll take a common constant 25 because see here 20 23 these are less than 25 28 29 these are more than 25 so some values just below 25 some values just above 25 so we'll take a common constant 25 deduct 25 from all these values will get reduced right now how you uh, you can see here calculations for ANOVA salesman a b c d four salesman x1 the sales conducted by a are 20 so 20 minus 25 you will get minus 5 similarly 23 minus 25 you'll get minus 2 next one is 28 minus 25 is 3 last one 29 minus 25 is 4 that's all so we are deducting 25 from every element and recording the values take the total you get 0 minus 5 minus 2 plus 3 plus 4 you will get 0 square it 5 5 is a 25 2 2 is a 4 3 3 is a 9 4 4 is a 16 total 54 see here easily without using calculator we can do it otherwise if you take the actual values we need the calculator to square it right that is the advantage of coding method so before making this you should write a note in examination to simplify the calculation we apply coding method by subtracting all the values from uh, by subtracting 25 from all the given values subtracting a common element 25 from all the elements next b b salesman the values are 25 32 so 25 minus 25 is 0 here i have taken 0 then 32 minus 25 7 i have taken 7 then 30 minus 25 5 i have taken 5 then 8 the 30 then 21 21 minus 25 is minus 4 minus 4. 
Then take the total 7 plus 5, 12, 12 minus 4, 8. Square, 0 square 0, 7 square 49, 5 5 is a 25, 4 4 is a 16, total 90. Same way C, 23, 23 minus 25 is minus 2. Here you can see minus 2. Then 28 minus 25, 3, 3. Then 35 minus 25 is 10, I have taken 10. Last one, 18 minus 25, minus 7, minus 7. Square it, 2 2 is a 4, 3 3 is a 9, 10 10 is a 100, 7 7 49, take the total. Last one is 15. D. 15 minus 25 is minus 10. Here I have taken minus 10. 21 minus 25 minus 4. Then 19 minus 25 minus 6. 25 minus 25 0. Square 10 times 100, 4 4 is 16, 6 6 36 0. Take the totals. I have taken all the totals. That's it. Now from here onwards, the steps are same. Total of all the items in all the samples. Remember the wording. Total of all the items in the all the samples. T. Summation x1 plus summation x2 plus summation x3 plus summation x4. x1 is 0. 0 plus 8 plus 4 minus 20. So 0 plus 8 plus 4 minus 20 you get minus 8. This is T. <coughs> Correction factor. T whole square divided by N. So minus a to whole square divided by n. n stands for number of items in all the samples. Each sample we are having 4, 4 items. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 items, then 4 item, 4 item, 4 item. 4, 4 is a 16. So totally 16 items are there. So CF correction factor 4. Now total sum of squares of all the items in all the samples. S, S, T. The formula summation x1 square plus summation x2 square plus summation x3 square plus summation x4 square minus cf. So how much is x square? 54 plus 90 plus 162 plus 152 minus 4. Here I have taken. So SST 454. Now SSC. Sum of square between the samples or columns. SSC. Summation x1 whole square by n1 plus summation x2 whole square by n2 plus summation x3 whole square by n3 plus summation x4 whole square by n4 minus cf. So 40 is here? 0. 0 square divided by 4. Then 8 whole square divided by 4. 4 whole square divided by 4. Minus 20 whole square divided by 4. Minus correction factor is 4. SSC 116. We got SST, we got SSC. Sum of squares within the samples, error, SSE, is equal to SST minus SSC. So 454 minus 116, you'll get 338 SSE. That's it. We got all the calculations for making ANOVA table. This is the ANOVA table. Now between samples, columns, SSC, we got 116 here. And columns, four columns are there, four minus one is three. So 116 by 3, 38.67. This is a MSC. Now within samples, error. SSE is 338. N minus C, total number of items of 16. Just now I told you. 16 minus 4, 12. MSC, 338 divided by 12, 28.17. Now, MSC divided by MSE, 38.67 divided by 28.17. It comes to 1.37. This is the computed value of F. Now we apply the steps. Null hypothesis. There is no significant difference in the sales made by the four salesmen. All the salesmen have made same sales. Mu1 is equal to Mu2 is equal to Mu3 is equal to Mu4. No significant difference. Alternative hypothesis. Mu1 not equal to Mu2, not equal to Mu3, not equal to Mu4. The sales are significantly different. Then level of significance, nothing is given, alpha 0 0.05 assumed, degree of freedom. V1, numerator, degree of freedom for numerator is 3 and denominator is 12. So V is V1 is equal to 3, V2 is equal to 12. Critical region, the table value, the table value of F at 5% level, this is the table. At 5% level, this on the top it is given 5%. Now V1 is equal to 3, so under 3, in the column 3 and row 12, Column 3, row 12. I am finding here 3.49. So 3.49 is the table value. 3.49. So critical region lies for F greater than or equal to 
So any value which is more than 3.49 will go in rejection. Any value less than 3.49 will fall in acceptance. Our computed value 1.6, 1.37. 1.37 is less. Here it will come. 1.37. It is less than 3.49. So it falls in acceptance region. So null hypothesis is accepted. What is the null hypothesis? No significant difference in the sales conducted by the four salesmen. Computed value of 1.37 is less than the critical value 3.49, so it falls in acceptance. Null hypothesis accepted, no significant difference in the sales made by four salesmen. That's all. This is the end of ninth problem. Now, see the last tenth problem. The following figures relate to production in kilogram. Of three varieties A, B and C of wheat sown in 12 plots. Now we want to compare the mean production, the average production from three variety of wheats. The varieties are A, B, C. So we are sowing this variety of seeds in 12 plots. Total number of plots are 12. The A variety was sown on 1, 2, 3, only 3 plots. B variety was sown on 4 plots and C variety was sown on 5 plots. So 5 plus 4 plus 3, 12 plots. Now is there any significant difference in the production of these 3 varieties? So only production, only one factor. So we have to find out the difference of only one factor. That's why we have to apply one way ANOVA, one way classification. This is the last problem on one way classification. In the next video, I'm going to start two way. The remaining problems are on two way. Now, here the values, the values are given 14, 16, 18. You can take the same values and calculate the F ratio or you can use the coding method. It is optional. It depends on you. If you are good in coding method, proceed and that will save your time. So here also in order to save the time, I am using coding method. If you closely watch the values, some values are less than 15 and some values are more than 15. You can see first value 14. It is less than 15. Next one is 16 and 18, more than 15. Next comes 14, 13, less than 15. So we can see all the values are surrounding 15. So I have taken a constant 15. Deduct all the values, deduct 15 from all the values. Deduct 15 from all the given values so that our data will get condensed, smaller value. Without calculator, we can do the calculation. That is my purpose. So before starting, before making this table, you should write in examination a note. To simplify the calculations, I apply coding method subtracting 15 from every element subtracting 15 from every element so a a variety in a variety so here i have taken calculations for another varieties of wheat a b c in a two columns x1 x1 square b two columns x2 x2 square c two columns x3 x3 square right now x1 the values are 14 14 minus 15 is minus 1 then next one 16, 16 minus 15 plus 1, then 18 minus 15, 3, the total is 3, square it, 1 1 is a 1, 1 1 is a 1, 3 3 is a 9, total is 11, easily without calculator I am calculating because I am using coding method, ultimate answer will be same, then B, B can be a 14, 14 minus 15 minus 1, then 13 minus 15 minus 2, then 15 minus 15, 0, then 22 minus 15, 7. The total is 4. 1 1s are 1, 2 2s are 4, 0, 7 7s are 14 and 54. Last C variety. 18 minus 15, 3. Then 16 minus 15, 1. 19 minus 15, 4. Again 19 minus 15, 4. 20 minus 15, 5. Take the total 17. Square. 3 3s are 9, 1 1s are 1, 4 4 16, 4 4 16, 5 5 20. 26, 20. 67 is the total. That's all. Now remaining steps are absolutely same what we are doing in the last so many problems. The first one T. The sum of all items in all the samples. T is equal to summation x1 plus summation x2 plus summation x3. Only three samples are there. 
समेशन x1 वन इज थ्री प्लस फोर प्लस सेवनटीन थ्री प्लस फोर प्लस सेवनटीन ट्वेंटी फोर करेक्शन फैक्टर सी एफ इज इक्वल टू टी होल स्क्वायर बाई एन दैट मीन्स ट्वेंटी फोर होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई ट्वेल्व ऑल द वैल्यूज प्लॉट आर ट्वेल्व प्लॉट गिवेन इन द प्रॉब्लम थ्री इन द फर्स्ट सैंपल फोर इन द सेकेंड सैंपल फाइव इन द थर्ड सैंपल ट्वेल्व प्लॉट फोर्टी एट सी एफ फोर्टी एट टोटल सम ऑफ स्क्वायर ऑफ ऑल द आइटम्स इन ऑल द सैंपल्स That is summation x1 square plus summation x2 square plus summation x3 square minus CF correction factor. So how much? 11 plus 54 plus 67. 11 plus 54 plus 67 minus 48. 84 is the SST. Now sum of squares between samples or columns SSC. Summation x1 whole square by n1 plus summation x2 whole square by n2 plus summation x3 whole square by n3 minus CF. तो स्क्वायर कर देंगे थ्री होल स्क्वायर थ्री होल स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री बिकॉज ओनली थ्री आइटम्स आर देयर इन द फर्स्ट सैंपल तो थ्री होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाय थ्री हियर टोटल इज फोर फोर होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाय फोर हियर सेवनटीन होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाय फाइव माइनस सी एफ फोर्टी एट तो थ्री होल स्क्वायर इज थ्री थ्री जो नाइन नाइन डिवाइड बाई थ्री थ्री फोर होल स्क्वायर फोर फोर जो सिक्सटीन सिक्सटीन बाई फोर इज फोर सेवनटीन होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई फाइव फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट एट Minus forty-eight. Sixteen point eight is the S S C. Now sum of squares within samples error S S E is equal to S S T minus S S C. Eighty-four minus sixteen point eight. Sixty-seven point two. That's so all. All calculations are over. Now we can make the ANOVA table as usual. So between samples S S C we got sixteen point eight. And degree of freedom C minus one columns. How many columns we have? Three columns A B C. तो थ्री माइनस वन टू तो सिक्सटीन पॉइंट एट डिवाइड बाई टू एट पॉइंट फोर नो विद इन सैंपल्स एर एस एस ई सिक्सटी सेवन पॉइंट टू डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम एन माइनस सी एन मीन्स टोटल नंबर ऑफ आइटम्स ट्वेल्व एन इज इक्वल टू ट्वेल्व ऑलरेडी ऑफ टेकन यू ट्वेल्व माइनस थ्री इज नाइन राइट नाउ सिक्सटी सेवन डिवाइड बाई नाइन इज सेवन पॉइंट फोर सेवन वी गॉट एम एस सी वी गॉट एम एस सी तो एफ इज इक्वल टू एम एस सी बाई एम एस सी 8.4 डिवाइड बाय 7.47 यू गेट 1.12 दिस इज द कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू ऑफ एफ नाउ वी फाइंड आउट द क्रिटिकल वैल्यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल नल हाइपोथेसिस म्यू वन इज इक्वल टू म्यू टू इज इक्वल टू म्यू थ्री नो सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द थ्री वैरायटीज ऑफ व्हीट ऑल द थ्री वैरायटीज ऑफ व्हीट आर सेम नो सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस देन देयर इज नो सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ थ्री वैरायटीज alternative hypothesis yes there is significant difference mu1 not equal to mu2 not equal to mu3 there is significant difference in the production of the three varieties of wheat next comes level of significance alpha 0.05 assumed not given in the problem next comes <clears throat> degree of freedom here degree of freedom for numerator is 2 and denominator is 9 So v1 is equal to two and v2 is equal to nine. Now critical region. If you refer the table, t to f table, you will find for v1 is equal to two and v2 is equal to nine. This is the table already I have provided in the link under my description. So uh, degree of freedom v1 is equal to two, v2 is equal to nine, four point two six. You can see here. 4.26 is the table value. So any value which is more than 4.26 will fall in rejection region. Any value less than 4.26 will fall in acceptance region. So here I have drawn the uh, I mean curve so that you can better understand. So 4.26 or more shaded area that is the rejection area. Unshaded area is the acceptance. Now our computed value is 1.12. So 1.12 is less than 4.26. So here 1.12 it will fall here 1.12. So it is falling in the acceptance region. Null hypothesis is accepted. There is no significant difference in the production average production from the three varieties of wheat. That's it.
so i have completed all the problems on one way classification one way and all it will not be given in the problem by reading the problem you will come to know whether it is one way or two way so far we have not done two way all one way because only one factor we are considering in every problem in the next video i am going to start two way anova where two factors we have to consider the same procedure will be applied but here calculations will slightly differ and table also instead of two rows one more row we have to open that's it so inshallah we will continue the two way anova in the next video so if you are satisfied with my lecture give a like to the video share my channel in your group in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge get a command on the subject confidence on the subject and do subscribe my channel give your comments from where are you from and which from which university you are pursuing your studies and lastly i want to inform you that i have started a second channel by name hans accounting institute the link is given in the description of this video also this video this channel i have prepared only for igcse students particularly for igcse students those who are pursuing the education for cambridge and edx and pearson they can watch those videos but others everybody can watch because uh, it will enhance your knowledge very knowledgeable video international education system is there so inshallah we will continue the next problem in the next video